Our Wednesday Night Hoops doubleheader on the ACC Network continues from PNC Arena in Raleigh, where the NC State Wolfpack look to snap a four-game skid against the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight with Malcolm Huckabee. I'm Jay Alter. Malcolm, both of these teams had long pauses due to COVID throughout the season, but we're playing tonight. Both teams are looking forward to it, and so are we. It's a great rivalry game. Yeah, it really is. And Wake coming off their first ACC win, looking to build on that momentum. NC State looking to get back into the win column. This should be a fun one tonight. You mentioned the first ACC win for Steve Forbes as a first-year head coach for the Demon Deacons. If they're looking to string two in a row, what do the Demon Deacons need to do tonight, Malcolm? Well, it comes down to the three-point line. Over their last two games, Wake Forest, they've had 28 threes in their last one. Uh, a win against Pitt, they had 15 made threes. I think that's going to be a key number tonight for Wake. Can they continue that hot streak from beyond the arc? You mentioned the hot streak from deep, and Ishmael Masood was the go-to guy. He exploded for eight three-pointers in that win against Pitt. Some of them were wide open, but a lot of those, Jay, were contested tough threes that he hit. Wake did a nice job finding him. Once he had the hot hand, Pitt was unable to get out and slow him down. That's going to be a key matchup tonight for NC State. Can they get out and defend the three-point line against Wake Forest? Now, the Wolfpack have to worry about defending the three because inside, they've got an eraser at the rim with Manny Bates. Manny Bates is one of the best rim protectors, not just in the ACC, but in all of college basketball. You look at his number. 34 blocks in 10 games to put that in perspective wake as a team has 17 total blocks entering today uh, he does a great job protecting the rim but i'm more impressed though with his offensive improvement in particular on the offensive glass wake is going to have their hands full keeping him out of the paint that's going to be another key area for them how they defend against the size of manny bates down low also on the offensive end for the Wolfpack, it all starts with Devin Daniels, who leads the team in points and assists. Doing a little bit of everything. Uh, you said it, Jay. Top 10 in three categories in the ACC, shooting a high clip from the floor, can get to the basket and take contact and finish. And I think the other thing that's equally as impressive, close to two steals per game. So he's getting it done on both ends of the court. And he's been their most consistent player this season. Kevin Keats in year number four of head coach of NC State. Three straight seasons with 20 or more wins. He's used to doing a lot of winning. This is actually a four-game losing streak for Keats right now, and that's his longest losing streak during his tenure on the Wolfpack sidelines. Yeah, and a lot of this was really out of his hands. The postponements uh, that we're going to get in and delays, in particular for a team like NC State, Jay, uh, they want to get out and pressure you. They want to create turnovers, and you look at it right here, four games canceled, three postpones. They missed a lot of practice time, and when we spoke with him yesterday, he said, look, the conditioning would just has not been there and going back to how NC State plays they want to force turnovers and up the pace I think they're looking to get back healthy and then see if they can force some turnovers and get some easy buckets early the only team in the ACC who may have had it worse in terms of COVID than NC State is Wake Forest their non-conference season totally derailed with a COVID outbreak shut down for about a month and then boom right into ACC play and understandably Malcolm First year program under Steve Forbes, right into ACC play with no real non-conference. Yeah, understandably, it took them a while to figure it out. Yeah, it really did, but he's done a nice job in their losses uh, against some really difficult opponents, top 25 opponents. He's done a nice job getting these guys to play hard, play together, and battle. They've had some close losses, and they were able to finally put it together and get their first win. But uh, as you take a look at this right here, Number 22, Virginia. Uh, they only lose by nine to uh, Virginia Tech. So, again, they've been in games. They finally were able to punch it against Pitt, and a big reason why defensively they were able to create some turnovers, and then offensively they were able to space the floor and knock down a lot of threes. And Ishmael Massoud led the way with eight threes in that win against Pitt. Got Wake Forest over the hump in ACC play and looking to keep it going on the road in Raleigh tonight against NC State. Wolfpack in white and red. Wake Forest 
in black and gold. Our officials tonight, Jamie Lucky, Brian Dorsey, and Brian O'Connell. And we are underway in Raleigh. NC State will start with the basketball. You take a look at the Wolfpack starting lineup tonight. This is the first time since December 30th these five have started for the Wolfpack. And NC State was playing their best basketball right around December 30th, a win against Boston College. Kevin Keats hoping with these five finally able to get on the floor together, they could keep that going tonight. Yeah, that's an important storyline of this starting five. Kevin Keats talked about you know, how disrupted it has been for them uh, with the interruption. So again, this is a good sign if you're NC State, have your roster back that you've had success with early on in the season. See if you can get these guys back on track. And, you know, it's been a four-game losing streak for NC State, but as we've talked about, Kevin Keats feels like he hasn't been able to play his best lineup, particularly conditioned, and Steve Forbes knows all too well about that, dealing with the COVID outbreak of his own. Great defense to start this game. This is the way Kevin Keats wants this Wolfpack team to play. Ellum's called for a travel inside. And Kevin Keats talked about this, the conditioning. This is the storyline for Wake. Can they take care of the ball against this NC State pressure? The Steve Forbes said, look, we must take care of the ball. Two possessions, two turnovers to start the game for Wake Forest. And Steve Forbes knows this story all too well. The Demon Deacons have really struggled this season to take care of the basketball. Yeah, and Coming into this game, NC State leads the ACC in steals, close to 10 steals per game, and uh, that's the storyline right there. Wake Forest, 14 turnovers per game. That's the second most in the ACC, and NC State, one of the better teams uh, in turning you over. Now, Wake Forest with the turnover there. The Australian microwave, as Steve Forbes called him, Jonah Antonio. And just like that, a three-pointer for Wake Forest. Ishmael Massoud picking up where he left off in the win against Pitt when he hit eight of them. If you're not there on the catch, he's going to have 30 again. He has just been on fire that time in transition off of a turnover. You must identify Massoud. And Massoud hauls in a rebound there. NC State can't set up their full court pressure, which Wake Forest has struggled with. Antonio pull up pop and he hits it. Well, when Wake Forest can actually sit up in their offensive side of the court, they're two for two tonight. Yeah, they want to run a lot of screen action that time. Antonio started like he was going to go off the screen and then kept the ball and miscommunication by NC State. Nice little pull up jumper. Here's Manny Bates working on Odio Guama. This will be a great matchup in the post that Bates can't cash in. Masood left open again, and he makes him pay again. Ishmael Masood back to back threes. And this Wake Forest team has started just like they finished against Pittsburgh. One ACC win under their belt, and they're starting to feel it. Demon Deacons, 8 2 early lead. Ishmael Masood and Wake Forest's first ACC win under Steve Forbes had eight three-pointers at 12 of the first 16, and right now he's got six out of the Demon Deacons' eight. How do the Wolfpack respond, Malcolm? Oh, that's the area right there in the paint. But don't settle for jumpers if you're Wake Forest. Either try to get something going to the basket that time, Daniels, or continue to try to work the ball down low with Manny Bates. 
and it's a chance to set up that full court pressure which has given Wake Forest tons of fits tonight. Three times NC State has turned it on and three times they've forced a turnover because of it. And that's how they want to play. Again, that is their DNA. They want to pressure you and try to force turnovers. This will be Wake Forest basketball. Even though it's not a made basket, the Wolfpack should show pressure here. If you're Wake Forest, how do you break this stifling press? Well, you're not going to break it with the dribble. You've got to flash guys to the middle or on the side and then try to advance that way. But when you dribble to the corners, that's where they want you to go. Oh, almost an over and back there. Jacoby Neath just brought it over. Aguama inside, double teamed, and it's blocked. Devin Daniels charging, and the ball's knocked away. It'll stay Wolfpack's way. And it's so impressive what Manny Bates does. The thing I like, Jay, when he blocks shots, a lot of times he doesn't punch him into the stands. He keeps him alive, so his team keeps possession. That's a heads-up play by one of the premier shot blockers in college. Bates now can add 35 blocks to his tally after that one, and that is more than double than Wake Forest has as their entire team. Demon Deacons as an entire team have only blocked 17 shots this season, 35 for Bates. Aguama almost got a piece of that one, but couldn't get it. Thomas Allen's floater falls. Once again, setting up that press, Carter Witt dribbles out of it. Takes it all the way. Can't get the finish, though. Cam A stepped on the line. The freshman grabbed the rebound, but then immediately turned it over. Now, NC State's doing a lot of switching on screens, down screens, and also ball screens. The hot hand, Masood getting through traffic, throws something up. The way he's shooting it, why wouldn't that one go down? But he'll get two at the line. And that's all set up because of the eight threes in the previous game. Again, you have to be there on the catch, but you also have to do a good job closing out because Masood will put the ball on the floor. Nice little head fake that time. Not settling for a jumper and then get to the free throw line. We asked Steve Forbes, were you expecting that type of performance for the sophomore Ishmael Masood, 31 points, eight threes against Pittsburgh? And he said, you know what? I kind of was earlier in the season, maybe not so much because he was forced to play at the five so often. But since he's moved to the four, he's really grown into that position offensively. But he did add at the end, he said, well, maybe not eight threes, maybe not eight for 10 from the three point line, maybe like five. Uh, but certainly <laughs> it was an outstanding performance uh, that he put on against Pitt to get that first ACC win. Great feed inside. Odio Guama does the rest. That's great patience by Wake Forest. That time, Manny Bates flattened out on the ball screen, wasn't able to get back and recover. Devin Daniels, the immediate answer. Inside, right back to Aguama, why not? And he's fouled, Manny Bates hacked him. We're just getting started on the ACC Network rivalry game in Raleigh, Wake Forest, up three. ACC Network basketball is brought to you by Zaxby's. Hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. Well, I guess it's rivalry night on the ACC Network tonight. We've got Miami and Florida State before us, and then take a look at some of those famous faces. Kevin Keats and Steve Forbes sp speaking with us at our coaches' calls about the rich history in this rivalry between Wake Forest and NC State. And 
you know, it's defined really by the players, right? And the, the players make the game. And you look at the rich history between the two schools. Look how even that is <laughs> with a thousand point scores, 400 plus assist guys. A lot of buckets, a lot of assists. I just love seeing those names. Gorgiani, Muggsy Bogues, Rodney Monroe. I mean, just so many great players. And there's this guy right here uh, still on the bench uh, at Wake, Randolph Childress, uh, one of the all time greats. So. Uh, you're absolutely right, Jay. Anytime these two teams get together, uh, a lot of great players, but you know, you're absolutely right. The history between these two teams and the history of great players, really impressive. Now, Kevin Keats told us in particular, too, he's trying to recruit more guys that play basketball in North Carolina from at the high school level. And that really grows this rivalry, too, because you look up and down these rosters, both teams have plenty of guys that played against each other in high school, and then you carry it into a, a heated rivalry in the ACC. Yeah, and he's done a nice job uh, recruiting the state of North Carolina, and, and you're absolutely right. That's going to be a key theme for both of these schools, keeping that in-state talent right here. And Well, look at Winston, two guys, Cam Hayes and Jalen Gibson, from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The Demon Deacons have a couple of guys from Raleigh as well. So these rivalries, you don't have to look very far to see why this game means so much to players on the court. Isaiah Wilkins drives the baseline, can't get the finish. Daniels lines up a three and buries it. I just love his game. We talked about the two steals per game of that he averaged, but he can beat you in so many different ways. Drives to the basket, he can take contact, and now he's knocking down threes. That's a beautiful dribble drive kick. And this is a heads up play by Hayes again. That's what you want to see if you're Kevin Keats. Guys moving the ball, assisted buckets. How about that? You got two guys from Winston-Salem, two guys from Durham, three from Durham, excuse me, and two from Raleigh. So Seaford knows plenty of North Carolina talent and a lot played right next door to PNC Arena. One of them, Carter Witt, who tries to close out that three there, unsuccessful as Shaquille Moore buries it. Steve Forbes takes a timeout. And Carter Witt, he was playing high school basketball eight miles away from PNC Arena at Leesville Road High School. He was getting ready for his high school basketball season. Then the NCAA grants immediate eligibility, so he decides to graduate early, and instead of playing high school basketball, he's trying to close out a three-pointer in an ACC rivalry game. Well, early on, I've been impressed with the NC State ball movement. And on that last last two possessions, they've had some really good ball movement, dribble drives, and then kick out to some wide open threes. And Steve Forbes not happy with the closeouts. Uh, then you can live with contested threes, but NC State has had uh, some pretty good ball movement and then they had some pretty good looks. Uh, and Wake Forest has to do a better job containing ball penetration and then they need to close out better on a three-point shooter. NC State on a 6-0 run in the last 40 seconds on a Devin Daniels three and then a Shaquille Moore three. And Witt, the kid we just told you should be playing high school basketball, handling the pressure here, passing off. Imagine that, Malcolm. You're getting ready for senior year ball and then boom, straight into ACC play. And making things happen as he finds Emmanuel Okpomo for his first bucket of the night. Wolfpack heating up. They've made their last three. Funderburg rejected at the rim. A rare Wake Forest block as they try and close the gap on, on Manny Bates. I think they only trail by 17 blocks now. And right here, again, nice ball movement, but the recovery. That's just great team defense uh, by Wake Forest. Daniels, he's got the hot hand. 
and it continues. The senior drills another one. And that's all set up by Thomas Allen. Again, they're in the lane. They're collapsing the defensive wake, and then they're kicking out. Really unselfish basketball and great ball movement by NC State. Looking for an immediate answer. It's another wake turnover. That's now five on the night. Here's Funderburk on the feed from Daniels, muscling his way to the rim, and he's fouled. Well, Kevin Keats talked about spending time on the offensive side. He's trying to find that balance. Uh, obviously, the conditioning we talked about at the tip with the cancellation of games, postponement, and the lack of practice time. But I've been impressed with their unselfish play. Again, on that last possession, Daniels has a chance to shoot a pull-up jumper, realize Funderburg is underneath better. High percentage shot gives it up. So again, they're sharing the ball and trying to play with the higher percentage shot. The Jericho Hallams continues the great shooting start for NC State. They're seven to 12 from the field. Musius brings that errant pass in. Off balance on the three, though. Coast to coast, more rejected at the rim. Daniels keeps it alive for the Wolfpack. Daniels, a perfect four for four. Misses that, his first miss of the night. Jalen Johnson lines up a three, can't connect. Knocked out of bounds almost midway through this first half. Both teams shooting 50% from the floor. And Devin Daniels has 10 of the Wolfpack's 19. They're up four. Wake Forest is one in six of the ACC, and Malcolm, it's not from the lack of shot making. They just can't keep the basketball. Yeah, and that's the story of this game early on. NC State has eight points off of five Wake turnovers, and uh, that was a key coming into this one. When we spoke with Steve Forbes, he said, look, NC State, we know what they're going to do. They're going to pressure us. We have to take care of the ball early on. Uh, NC State doing a nice job creating offense off of their defense. Now the Demon Deacon shooting well from the floor, five for 10. So five field goals made, but they've also got five turnovers. And that is not just what's plagued them here in rally, but all season long in the ACC. And it's a conference that is very unforgiving when you turn the ball over at a high clip. Alums fighting through traffic, can't finish. Last touched off NC State, so Wake Forest basketball. Yeah, a lot of contact, no call. Helms looking for the call. No field goals in nearly three minutes for the Demon Deacons. Risky pass there, Williamson on the other end. Five seconds to shoot. Masood has to hurry. Driving on Daniels. He's called for a travel. Now, although it wasn't full court pressure, that might have been their best half court possession, NC State defensively. Closed out. And the thing about not having fans, you can hear the communication for NC State. Uh, they do a good job when they're switching on screens, communicating, talking. Inside, Funderburk takes him a second, but then puts it up and in for an easy layup. Again, Allen, unselfish play. He's done a nice job getting into the paint, either kicking it out to shooters that time, though, to Funderburk. Oguama trying to end a three-minute, 30-second scoring drought, and he can't do it. 
Daniel splits the defenders, draws the foul. Gives us time to remind you we have a loaded quadruple header right here on the ACC Network. Saturday it tips off with this Wake Forest team taking on Miami and then Florida State Georgia Tech right after. That should be a good one. Six o'clock, it's a top 20 matchup in Blacksburg, Virginia, taking on Virginia Tech in the Commonwealth Clash, and then Notre Dame, Pittsburgh is your nightcap. Boy, oh boy, what a great Saturday for ACC basketball. And what a night Devin Daniels is having a 10-0 run by the Wolfpack, and Daniels has 13. The officials stop play here. NC State's opened up a nine-point lead on the back of Devin Daniels. Yeah, he's done a little bit of everything. In the lane, again, take the hit. That's a tough floater. And then right here, excellent dribble drive, kick out. And he's been knocking threes down. That one, a contested three. NC State doing a nice job finding him either off of curl cuts or dribble drives and then kicking it out to the three-point line. So they had to reset the shot clock on this possession. That's why we had to stop and play. Remember, Wake Forest started this game up 8-2. to two, And things have fallen apart for the Demon Deacons. In the last five minutes, the Wolfpack on a 16-2 run. Ellums. Pump fake goes in, draws the foul. He'll head to the line for two. What has changed in this game, Malcolm, from NC State? Trailing eight to two, they're now blowing it open here on the verge of a double-digit lead. Well, they've taken Wake Forest out of their comfort zone. There have been no open looks uh, in the first, really, five minutes of this game. Uh, Wake had some easier looks at, at the basket. Uh, that has changed uh, in this last three to four minute stretch. And then offensively, NC State's doing a nice job just breaking down the Wake defense. Wake on defense is trying to put everything to the side. They're icing ball screens, uh, but NC State is still getting into the lane. And then they're finding people for open looks around the basket or on the three-point line. Largest this is lead the of the night area. for the Wolfpack. And you just said it, Malcolm, spurred on by this full court pressure that Wake Forest has failed to handle. Six turnovers tonight. Break the press that time. Can it lead to points, though? Coming up on a five-minute scoring drought for the Demon Deacons. Trying to end that. Williamson in attack mode right to the rack for two. That's a beautiful play that time. Getting into the lane, knifing to at least two or three defenders. That's one of the few easy looks they've had in this last five minute stretch. Jericho Hellams fires and hits. An immediate response from the junior from deep. That's an excellent use of the ball fake. Oguama in the post. Goes in on Funderburg. And you can hear the NC State bench saying, stay home. They're not doubling. And that's a luxury they have with Funderburg and also Bates being good post defenders. left open and he makes NC State pay. Well, that's one of the few breakdowns they've had in this last stretch. Uh, Masood, we talked about it. He's a guy that has been on fire shooting the ball. He's the one guy you can not leave alone if you're NC State. He's got nine of Wake Forest, 19. Ripping down the rebound. Great hustle from Jericho Hellams. And it's a nine point lead of the Wolfpack. Trying to snap a four game losing streak at home against Wake.
tomorrow night. Women's basketball doubleheader right here on the ACC Network. Georgia Tech in Miami tips things off, and then it's number one Louisville at North Carolina. Cardinals had a scare last week, but one hung on to that number one spot, and you can see him tomorrow night right here on the ACC Network. Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you. Wake Forest started this game so well, got up early 8-2. Kevin Keats took an early timeout, and boy, the Wolfpack have responded in a big way. Devin Daniels leads the way with 13, controls it here right into the paint, loses the handle though. Jacoby Neath can't go up. Great strip by the Wolfpack. Jonah Antonio called for the foul. And this is the area where I feel Wake needs to try to get out and transition. Great, though, transition defense by Allen. And if you go back to Wake Forest's last game, that first win against Pitt, Jay, uh, they had 19 points off of turnovers against Pitt. So they were able to create some turnovers of their own. And uh, that has not been the case early on in this game against NC State. I think they got to try to get out and transition uh, before that NC State full court pressure can get set up. And Wake made their first three shots of this game, and since then they've only made four in about a 10 minute span. Thomas Allen called for a foul there, playing a little too aggressive. When you're playing against a team as aggressive as NC State is, backdoor cuts, and I think they got to flash some of the bigs up to try to relieve some of that pressure. But you don't want your guards trying to dribble against the NC State pressure. But try to bring some bigs up and then see if you can get some backdoor cuts because they're going to be really aggressive in the passing lane. Wolfpack playing with some defensive urgency in this first half as well. Rivalry game on a four-game losing streak, and they have definitely brought it defensively. And right on cue, DJ Funderburg swats one away. Yeah, and that goes to show his mobility. That's a big out there sliding with the guard and then the block. Again, that's not easy uh, going up against the guard. Got switched off, and that's just great footwork by Funderburg. Three seconds on the shot clock. Williamson has to hurry, blocked again, and that's a shot clock violation. Masood could not get it off in time. Well, Kevin Keach preaches this. Uh, make no mistake about it. That is where uh, they are a dangerous team, NC State, when they can pressure you and they put on uh, some really good uh, half-court defensive stands. That time, again, coming up with a shot clock violation. They just do a good job contesting. Give it away on the offensive end there. I mean, is that the right word for it, Malcolm, the defensive intensity that you're seeing tonight from Kevin Keats' team? Absolutely. And, you know, again, he didn't want to make excuses for it, but uh, they had not, you know, with the disruptions, uh, not much practice time. So the conditioning wasn't there. Look, they want to pressure you uh, for 40 minutes and create turnovers like they've been able to do in this Wake Forest game. And you're right, the intensity it certainly looks, uh, they look a little bit more energized tonight against Wake Forest. Now right on cue, turnover number eight against Wake Forest in this first half. And Kevin Keats, you know, he didn't want to make excuses, but I agree with you, Malcolm. When you miss 17 practices at ACC play, it's tough to just go out there and win on game day. But right now, Wolfpack playing the best they've looked in the last month for sure. Devin Daniels. Called for a travel after the offensive rebound fell to the senior. Both teams in a scoring drought right now. Neither team has scored in the last two minutes and 30 seconds. Darion Sebron checks into the game for Devin Daniels, another one of the talented freshmen in a freshman class that Kevin Keats has brought in that the fan base is really excited about the potential of these young guns for the Wolfpack. Everybody, 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 
stays Wake's way. Eusius drive it into Moore. And it's a jump ball possession arrow stays with Wake. Well, that's another example of good team defense by NC State. Lucius thought he had a mismatch down low. The help, though, digging out in the post was there for NC State. David Williamson lost the handle. That's turnover number nine. Up ahead, Helms. And it's going the other way. Charges the call. Yeah, that's one of the few bad decisions that he's made, Daniels, in this game. Again, you get the force turnover, excuse me, Helms, and then right here trying to do a Euro step. Yeah, that's pretty good positioning. Let's see. Yeah, he just basically ran him over. Again, in that situation right there, if you're Helms, it's one on three. You get the steal, pull it back out, try to get something in the secondary break. Swatted away. NC State take it on the break again, and a foul will send Cam Hayes to the line when we come back. Last four minutes, these two teams combine 0 for 8, seven turnovers. NC State still controlling a nine-point lead. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, Packer and Durham debate. Who's had the better run? It's a great question. Could go either way. Clemson football or Virginia basketball in the last couple of years. Both have just been so dominant and not just the ACC in the country. And Malcolm and I will recap the first half highlights and stats. And most of those highlights have come from this Wolfpack defense, Malcolm. Yeah, it really has uh, been sloppy for Wake Forest. Uh, after that, really, the 10-minute mark uh, with the NC State defense, uh, you're right, Jay, has turned it up and uh, really made it difficult uh, for Wake Forest. The good news, though, for Wake Forest, NC State really has not been able to capitalize on that and extend this lead. Yeah, the Demon Deacons have nine turnovers, and they've missed 10 of their last 12 shots, and yet they're only down nine. Isaiah Wilkins for three, that's off the mark. Cam Hayes wanted it from his fellow freshman Moore. Inside Funderburk, and he makes the Demon Deacons pay. Well, that's great patience again by NC State. Moving the ball around and then a nice post entry pass. Cam Hayes showing off. He's on ball defense. He's got great hands, and Kevin Keats really excited about this freshman. Offensive rebound and a foul. We'll send Isaiah Musius to the line. And you're right, Jay. I really have been impressed with Hayes' on ball D. Again, if you want to get on the court with Kevin Keats, it starts there. And you know, obviously, he's had great success with some point guards. Obviously, the guy that he's uh, trying to replace, Markel Johnson, one of the greats in NC State. And, you know, look, this is part of the natural progression for a freshman point guard. And Kevin Keats talked about the lack of practice time uh, really has hurt some of his young players and their development early on. But uh, make no mistake about it, you can see the talent is there, long arms, and uh, certainly is going to be a guy that fits right in this system of pressure D. Isaiah Musius at the line for Wake Forest. Makes both of them. He's been a little bit of feast or famine this season, lacking consistency. You look at the last two games, he goes for a career-high 27 against North Carolina, but then follows it up with a goose egg against Pitt, and he's 0 for 4 tonight from the field. Pull up Pop Hayes, too much on it. Let's see if Wake can string together two good offensive possessions. See if they can try to close out this half on a good note. 
Instead of turnover, that's number 10 against the Demon Deacons, and they've gone five minutes without a made field goal. And yet, only down nine. Musi has contested three, can't connect. Wake again, trying to push the ball to keep it on the side. Thunderberg loses the handle. Nothing but net every Sunday right here on the ACC Network, our weekly studio show where they'll break down the week that was and the week that's still to come in the ACC, both on the men's and women's side. Eight o'clock on Sunday. Yeah, both teams really have been sloppy and careless with the ball. Credit Oguama, good post defense on that last one against Bunderberg. Foul called off ball. They call it against Thomas Allen. And that puts Wake in the bonus, so they'll be shooting. Now how about the Demon Deacons? One for their last 10, O of their last eight, no field goals in the last six minutes, 10 turnovers, and yet only down nine with a chance to make it seven from the foul line. Yeah, if you're Steve Forbes, although it's been ugly uh, in this last 10 minute stretch, uh, you have to be pleased with that number there. It just feels like they're down a lot more, but you're right. It's still single digits uh, with a chance to inch a little closer before half. Deep three, Masood. They need him to heat up like he did with his eight threes in the win against Pitt over the weekend. Underberg tries a three. Well, I still feel, Jay, one of the things Wade can get is some backdoor cuts. Even when NC State's trying to switch on screens, maybe a couple times guys will slip it to try to loose up uh, some of the ball pressure because they're just so aggressive in the passing lane, NC State. A pitiful offensive display in this first half, only down nine. How about a bucket here right at the end of the first half? And it said it's a, another shot clock violation. Well, you got to credit NC State. They've done a nice job in their half court and also the full court of forcing Wake into some really difficult shots. That's a big reason why they've been an offer in this last stretch. But again, unable to capitalize on the other end offensively NC State. Now, Wake Forest started this game shooting three for three from the floor. Since then, they are four of 21, one for their last 12, O oh of their last 10, and 10 turnovers to go along with it. Normally, you do that on the road in the ACC, and you're down 20, 25, and yet it is only a nine-point deficit with plenty of basketball for Steve Forbes' team. Yeah, and, and, you know, credit them, too, and Steve Forbes has talked about this. Those guys continue to grind. Um, they're playing some pretty good defense on the other end as well, too. They've created some turnovers. Uh, so, again, obviously struggling offensively, but they haven't let it impact their defense. And credit Trying Obama. to keep it to single digits here. Three seconds. Daniels goes into attack mode. And he's fouled as that ball falls off the rim. He'll get two shots with 0.7 seconds left remaining. 
in the first half. Don't let that zero on our score bug feel you. Still .7 seconds remaining after these foul shots from Daniels. Well, Daniels has been the one bright spot offensively uh, for NC State. That's his 14th point. Make it 15 now for the half for Devin Daniels. He, he leads everybody in points and rebounds in this game. 15 of the Wolfpack's 32 as NC State ends the first half comfortably in the driver's seat in this rivalry game, an 11 point lead. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, we welcome you back inside PNC Arena in Raleigh, NC State, a 32-21 lead at the half. With Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jay Alter. Malcolm, you take a look at the first half. Wake Forest started this game shooting really well, an 8-2 lead, and then Kevin Keats turned up the defensive pressure, and it was all Wolfpack from there. Yeah, that's the story of the first half. Wake Forest's inability to handle the pressure of NC State. It was turnover city, but you look at it, 13 turnovers in that first half and 12 points for NC State off of those turnovers. The one bright spot, though, for NC State offensively, uh, Devin Daniels uh, really shot the ball well from the perimeter. They did a nice job, NC State, breaking down the defense, getting into the paint and finding him. But uh, for Wake, they got to do a better job in the second half taking care of the ball. You mentioned Wake's 13 turnover certainly plagued the Demon Deacons, but the bright side is their defense kept them in it. NC State, they only managed one field goal in the last seven minutes and 30 seconds of the half. It's only an 11 point lead. Plenty of basketball still to play in this great rivalry game. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Ishmael Massoud after his career high 31 points against Pitt and Wake Forest first ACC win of the season started the game hot made his first two shots but then cooled off and then for NC State Devin Daniels leading the way he has 15 of the Wolfpack's 32. Well the adjustments Jay in the second half for Wake Forest that's going to be the story I think of this game what adjustments do they make to handle the pressure of NC State. Inside to Manny Bates, and he cashes in to open this second half. And they can turn up that full court pressure, which Malcolm, you just mentioned, really plagued the Demon Deacons in that first half. Back to that opening play. What a post entry pass to Manny Bates. That's a beautiful set play to open up the second half. Odeo Guama trying to answer on Bates, and Bates rejects him at the rim. And he baits one of the best shot blockers in the entire country with the, another block there. Williamson step back three as the shot clock sounds. Oguama keeps it alive for the Demon Deeks. <laughs> Jonah Antonio loses the handle. Here's oh, Helix. Like... Second effort's good. What did it look like, Malcolm? Jay, it looked like Manny Bates was reaching for his ankle after the block something he looked pretty good now but after the original block it looked like he went down to reach at his ankle now you know I'm not sure if he was going to tie his shoe or if there's some type of uh, re-injury of that ankle well he has been battling that ankle injury the last couple of weeks something to monitor for sure Bates can't get his arm to that one Isaiah Musius Gets Wake Forest started in this second half. Remember, this Wake Forest team, they trailed by seven at halftime against Pitt over the weekend. Steve Forbes really liked the second half adjustment, said that was the difference in earning their first ACC win. Now, the big difference is can they do it down 13 on the road?
Tried to feed Oguama again, and that off the sophomore's hand. Right here, take a look at Manny Bates. That looked like he was a little ginger, a little push in the back, and then he went down and reached for his ankle afterwards. But he stays out on the court and looks like he's moving pretty good. So Daniels in attack mode. Devin Daniels right to the rack. And the seniors up to 17 points tonight. And there's the turnover bug again against Wake Forest. Although Hallam gives it right back. Well, that's 16 Anto turnovers. And, and Jay Antonio's trying to dribble through this full court pressure. You're not going to beat it uh, off the dribble. Again, you want to try to relieve pressure in the middle with a big or a forward coming up and then play from there. But you know, if you try to beat it off the dribble, NC State's players are going to come from behind and also the side to try to poke the ball away like they just did on that last possession. Davian Williamson, the leading scorer for Wake Forest, but he's been quiet, only two points to his name. Ishmael Masu driving into traffic and draws the foul. Well, he is the one guy, and that's a heads-up play uh, by Wake, realizing Masood had the size advantage and Masood not settling for a pull-up jumper. Uh, had the smaller Beverly on him and forced the action. Great job to get to the free throw line. And Beverly called for the foul. I have not said the senior's name, Braxton Beverly, too much tonight. He is yet to take a shot. Only one assist to his name. Does have three steals on the defensive end, though. Here he is now with the ball. Foul called against Emmanuel Okpomo inside. The freshman bodying up Manny Bates. His second foul. And Forbes really credited him in the pit when, when Obama was in foul trouble. He felt like Okpomo came in and gave them quality minutes. But back to this game right here. Wake's got to do a better job on Devin Daniels. He has been the one guy that has hurt them that time off the dribble. Nice floater. Daniels has 19. Wake is a team only has 25. Antonio off the mark. And another foul called. Did they call that against Beverly? Yeah, well, he got a hook and again yeah, he right did. there. He hooked his arm. The referee's in good position, <laughs> and that's an easy call to make. Yep. And they're going to review this. Officials really trying to crack down on that hook and hold, Malcolm. And I think they've got a really strong case. Once I saw it on the replay, it was very obvious. Yeah, that's not a good play by Beverly. Again, you had pretty decent position trying to block out, but then you hooked the arm. That's right in front of the ref. We saw it originally on the replay. Yeah, he's holding his arm. He tried to let go of it. So they're reviewing whether this should be a flagrant one. We'll step aside as the officials continue to review this foul. Be right back. Now, Brian O'Connell and Jamie Lucky spent a lot of time at the monitor during the break, and they are going to call this a flagrant one foul for illegal contact caused by a player hooking an opponent over or under the arm in an attempt to deceive the official into believing the contact was caused. And remember, Malcolm, two years ago, this was added to the NCAA rulebook to become a flagrant one, a real point of emphasis, and they, they got Braxton Beverly for it there. Yeah, not sure why they took so much time uh, to make that call. Again, in 
Jamie, look, he's explaining to him now, but it was a clear hook. He hooked him, and by the rule, uh, it's a flagrant one. So, again, the refs were right there in good position to make that call, and you know, it was certainly not a necessary play uh, by Braxton Beverly. We'll show it to you one more time. And again, in real time, tough to see from that angle, but you can, Beverly definitely got under there, and by the letter of the law, that is a flagrant one. So Wake goes one for two from the line, down 14, trying to get something going. Well, let's see if Wake can capitalize off of that, try to build some type of momentum, but thus far, still been a struggle for them offensively. Williamson pivoting around, too much on it. Okpomo, the put back in perfect position to cash in off the offensive glass. He continues to play well defensively. I think he's been solid against the bigs against NC State. And that's just great work on the offensive glass. Thomas Allen on the drive, can't connect. Williamson scoop to the hoop, and just like that, it's a 10-point game. Well, Williamson's done that twice now in this game where he's been able to break down the NC State D, that time off the pick and roll, the help's late. That's one of the few uncontested looks they've had in this game. You're not going to get many uncontested looks with Manny Bates in the game. Braxton Beverly knocks down his first shot of the night. And that's a big one right there. Just when Wake was trying to cut this thing back to single digits. That's a huge three by Beverly, who's been quiet from the three-point line in this game. Uh, he loves playing Wake Forest. Last year, he was eight of nine from three against the Demon Deacons, and he starts this game one for one. Jalen Johnson throws that ball away up ahead. Here's Thomas Allen in transition. One on four, goes up anyway. Falls to Manny Bates. And he's got two coming to the foul line. Saturday, we've got a tremendous college basketball quadruple header starting at 2 o'clock right here on the ACC Network with Miami and Wake Forest. Then it's Florida State and Georgia Tech to follow at 4, 6 o'clock. Top 20 game in the Commonwealth Clash in Blacksburg. Number 8, Virginia on the road against Virginia Tech. And then your nightcap, Notre Dame against Pittsburgh. Four terrific basketball games right here in the thick of ACC play on the ACC Network. Well, I think this is a crucial stretch right here, Jay, for Wake Forest. Uh, right now, you're trailing 15, and five minutes has passed in this second half. They need to try to get something going offensively. Tried to go for the big finish alley-oop to Odio Guama. Instead, it's turnover number 18 for Steve Forbes' team. And there's your storyline. 18 points off of turnovers for NC State. And Thunderberg. No, actually, they call that against Wake. I thought Thunderberg's elbow may have... Cotto Guama, and actually it was Musius. I think it was his shoulder again, and they're calling. He's got to give him. And he's in his cylinder now. Again, I don't think there was any elbow. That was just a shoulder. Yeah. It looked like he caught him with the shoulder blade. I don't think his elbow came up. Right here, he's going to spin. Yeah. But the foul is called against Musius. And it definitely looks like it was the cylinder rule. Again, you have to give the offensive player some space. He was right up under him, and, and that's basically uh, the rule book right there. 
All right, the space the player legally has to occupy defined by the imaginary cylinder. So again, the referee was right on top of that. And you have to give that player a chance uh, to move. That time he had basically both hands on him right there, leaning in. Yeah, he got him. I think the elbow, I think it was on the lower part when he swim because his head was down, mm -hmm. but he had basically two hands on him, and they're going to call that every time. Malcolm, how difficult is it for Steve Forbes' team to guard and match up what NC State puts DJ Funderburg and Manny Bates on the court at the same time? Well, that was one of the things Kevin Keats talked about, where having Manny Bates back and being able to have him and DJ on the floor at the same time, obviously the defensive presence for Bates, but then also it allows Funderburg to go down, play that four position, and create some matchup problems. So, uh, again, that's a difficult matchup for Wake. And, I think the rest were looking to see if there was anything flagrant in terms of elbows thrown by Funderburg. We are being told it was called a common foul. It'll be NC State ball underneath. Right back to Funderburg. Why not? He's got the mismatch and he cashes in on it. And that was the concern for Steve Forbes, how he matched up or how Wake Forest matched up against the size. Excellent heads up play though by NC State playing to their advantage, not settling for a jumper. Masood leaves a three begging. He is really cooled off, missed his last three from deep after starting two for two. It's not just Masood who's cooled off. Wake as a team has not made a three since Masood knocked down the opening two of the game. Gets one inside, though. Well, if I'm NC State, I'm going back down low to Funderburg. Let him get a touch in the paint. Cam Hayes fires a three, can't connect. Carter Witt goes into three NC State defenders and turns it over. That's now 19 turnovers. And NC State continues to capitalize. A really simple game plan for the Wolfpack. Turn him over and get offense out of defense. Yeah, and this is one where Carter Witt will learn from. Steve Forbes talked about him being able to get to the weight room on the other end right there. Cam Hayes, the other freshman guard, talented guard, uh, capitalizing, getting out in the open court and now at the free throw line. But you know, back to your point earlier, Jay, the, the turnovers. Uh, you know, again, it sounds like a broken record in this game, but that's really... It's as simple as that. When Wake hasn't turned the ball over, uh, they've been able to get some decent looks. Uh, the problem is, is that now they're at 19 turnovers in this game. You take a look at when NC State wins a game and loses a game, and it's really that turnover battle, and certainly they're dominating it today. Jacoby Neath pulls the trigger. Ten straight misses from three for Wake, and that's the formula, Steve Forbes says. Need to make ten threes to win in the ACC, and tonight they've only made two. Oguama fouled as a sophomore was posting up. NC State. Largest lead of the game, 17, as we step aside. You think of all the great players to put on a Wolfpack uniform, David Thompson, Chucky Brown, TJ Warren, and yet DJ Funderburg, senior right now, 
for NC State. Beats all of them in terms of career field goal percentage. He's hovering around 60%, second best in program history. And it's funny, we asked Kevin Keats about it. He goes, I want him to shoot more. You know, he's shooting it at 60% consistently over his career. He needs to demand the ball and put up more shots. We need him to score. Yeah, and I think that's a lot on sometimes the young backcourt understanding Look, if you have an advantage, which they do in this game, you need to get him more touches. But you're absolutely right. Kevin Keats said, look, typically it's the opposite. I got to tell guys to stop shooting or hunting shots. Uh, DJ so unselfish. That's just not in his makeup. But certainly he is shooting at a high clip and deserves uh, more touches. And just said not in his nature to demand for the ball. But when he gets it, he does a lot of damage. Jalen Johnson's cleans that ball up for an easy lay-in. You know, Wake's hovered around this 15-point deficit mark, but has failed to get it to single digits in this second half. And a deep three goes. NC State just rolling from three. They're shooting at 50%, 7 of 14. That one belongs to the freshman, Shaquille Moore. And that's all set up by Devin Daniels. Beautiful feed that time out of the double team. Spin out of it, and they kicked it to a wide open shooter. Jacoby Neath, a much needed answer. First make for Wake Forest from three in their last 11 attempts. Wake continues the ice ball screens. Again, they want to try to keep everything on the side. Right now, Kevin Keats playing both freshmen in the backcourt together, Cam Hayes and Shaquille Moore. That's the future of this program, and both have been inconsistent through 11 games this season, but that is the future, and if they ever get hot together, boy, that is quite the combo between those two freshman guards, Hayes and Moore. Moore lost the handle there. Williamson pull up, pop, hits it. And Wake has made three in a row. Can the Demon Deacons put together a run and try and claw back? Daniels in trouble, passes out of it. Ellums pulls the trigger, can't knock it down. Foul called underneath. Goes against Emmanuel of Pokemo. Yeah, it looked like they got him on a hold. Yeah, again. Yeah, that area. Yeah, it looks like they probably got him for the hook. Thunderbird trying to get on the offensive glass. Looks like they might take a look at this one as well. Now we've had a bunch of monitor reviews in the second half. One earlier for that hook and hold flagrant one called against Braxton Beverly. And this time they're seeing if the freshman Okpomo got under Thunderbird. Now that, that one's one. less obvious, but it still could be called. What do you think, Malcolm? Yeah, absolutely, you read my mind. That, this one's less obvious than the one that they called on Braxton Beverly. That right there looks like uh, he was just trying to block out, and then they just got tangled. He was trying to block out. So, again, I don't think I would be surprised if they call a hook on this one. If Funderburg has his hand in there, too, uh, to me it seems like two guys in a rivalry game on a Wednesday night going for a rebound. Yeah. And the officials agree with me. They call it a common foul. We resume play. Wide open, blown coverage underneath. Devin Daniels is fouled. Well, not sure how that happened. Devin Daniels, the night he has had tonight, he is definitely one guy you cannot lose track of if you're Wake Forest. 
Heads up, out of bounds underneath. Pass to Daniels, who was wide open. Uh, Daniels had 21 in the loss to North Carolina. And now he has 20. So back-to-back 20-plus -back performances for Devin Daniels. Masood contested three. Still misfiring. He's missed his last four from deep. Daniels lost the handle, but corrals it. Daniels in attack mode, but just lost the handle. And the senior does stay down. Now that is obviously not a sign that anybody wants to see. Hard to tell from our angle whether or not he stepped on anybody's foot or he just, his knee gave out. Uh, his, his leg just gave out right there. Man, that doesn't, uh... yeah, there's really no contact. He just went to come to a jump stock, and yeah, his knee just buckled. I hate to see this, and we were just talking about what a great night he's having with 20 points and 10 rebounds. What a leader he has become in his senior season, both on and off the floor. Getting help to his feet now by head coach Kevin Keats and the training staff for NC State. Certainly, we highlighted him being in the top three, excuse me, top 10 in the ACC in three categories. And you know, what he means to them offensively and then defensively with the steals. Uh, certainly, he is just such a key piece to what NC State wants to do and he started off hot in this game excellent dribble drives he was one of the few guys to be able to find success from beyond the arc that time a beautiful step back three so certainly hope that that young man is okay hopefully it's nothing long term where he'll be out of the NC State lineup his night likely ends in this game, and he still records a double-double. 20 points, 10 rebounds, his third double-double of the year. Now the Wolfpack will try and manage without him for the last eight minutes and 30 seconds. Up 14. Jericho Hallams, fade away, does not drop. NC State cooling off, just one for their last eight and they've missed their last four. Can Wake Forest capitalize? Oguama splits the double team off the window and in for Odie Oguama. Well, that's a nice pass out of the double team that time and Oguama finishing with the left. That one rolls off the rim too. Wake Forest can make it single digits for the first time in this second half with a three. There's Jalen Johnson cutting through the lane, keeps it alive, goes up with it, doesn't drop second effort, no good. Thomas Allen passes. Kevin Keats told us he wants to see Allen take threes instead of hesitate, and he hesitates again, and it leads to a turnover. NC State still in the driver's seat, leading by 12, but Wake Forest making a run with 7.15 to go.
Kevin Keats at NC State still control a 12-point lead. They just lost their senior leading scorer, Devin Daniels, to the locker room as we continue to monitor his status. Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you. Wake Forest, they've clawed back to within 12. This is the closest it's been all half, Malcolm. How do the Demon Deacons continue to gain momentum and try and make a run at this game? Well, the obvious, don't turn the ball over. That has been problematic. They've done a nice job, though, hanging around in this game. Now they have a chance to cut it to single digits. I think getting something going towards the basket, that's where they've had the most success in the paint. Right on cue into Oguama, and he cashes in on a beautiful right hook. It's a 10-point game, and Odi Oguama has six points of this second half. And I'm going to say the same thing for NC State. I think that they've settled for jumpers the last couple of possessions. See if you can either get Manny Bates a touch in the post or drive the ball and get into the paint. Hellums does just that. Count it, plus the foul. Jericho Hellums with a much needed bucket and one. Heads up play, great offensive possession and patience by NC State, and then this is a tough finish by Helms. Great concentration, flexing there, and the bench loves it. And that's a big bucket to stop this run by Wake Forest. Scoring drought that was nearing three minutes for NC State comes to an end with a three-point play from Jericho Helms. He's up to 13 points. NC State, when he scores 16 or more, is 8-1. and one. As he closes in on that number, Manny Bates calls for a foul, Ding up Oguama. The sophomore has gotten the upper hand on Bates the last couple times down the court. Yeah, and I've liked his aggression, and particularly defensively. Oguama's done a nice job battling for post position on both the offensive and defensive side, doing a great job getting lower leverage against Bates. That's the third foul against the sophomore Manny Bates. Thomas Allen poked that one away. It'll be Wake Forest ball underneath. Well, it's easy to see why NC State leads the ACC with close to 10 steals per game. They are just active off the bounce or in the passing lane. They're going to try to get their hands on balls whether it's off the pass or dribble. They've got 10 steals tonight, and it caused 20 turnovers. Big reason why they're up 13. How about Darion Sebron right to the rack, and he's fouled. Freshman heads to the line. And this is a great fast break. Beverly, that's all set up by Beverly. Again, a lot of times guys in that situation hold the ball too long, heads up, one dribble, saw he had his guy up there and give get rid of it. That's excellent transition basketball by NC State. Last six minutes of this game, Kevin Keats' team up by 13. A really good test for the Wolfpack to see how they play without their senior leading scorer and leading assister, Devin Daniels, on the court. If you missed it earlier, he was taken to the locker room at about the 8.30 mark. And we just got word from... NC State Sports Information Director that Devin Daniels will not return to tonight's game. Inside of Guama, rejected by Bates. Zebron back the other way, splits two defenders. Darion Zebron, coast to coast for two. Oh, that's another beautiful move by the freshman. Oh, Guama looking for the immediate answer, and he's fouled. All set up by Manny Bates' D, but then this is just great move, individual move by Seaborn. And then Manny Bates getting locked up right there. Refs didn't call anything, surprisingly, but Manny Bates with another block. He's up to three which is about his average 37 blacks on the season, leads the ACC third in the country. And NC State as a team tonight has seven blocks. They have just dominated 
the interior against an undersized Wake Forest team. Zebron had played well on the last couple of possessions, but turns that ball over. Five minutes to play, Wake Forest trailing by 14. Heath puts it up. Great offensive rebound, Odi Aguama. Neath looking for a second chance, points and he drills the three. Jacoby Neath makes it an 11-point game. All set up by Oguama, and I like the idea. He gets an offensive rebound, doesn't try to jack up a difficult shot, keeps the possession alive, and then the end result, beautiful ball movement to a open three. Thomas Allen fading away, that does not drop. NC State trying to protect an 11-point lead. The Wolfpack on a four-game losing streak, trying to end that skid with a win against their rival. Back to Oguama. They call a foul on the floor. That's against Manny Bates, and that is his fourth foul. So four fouls against Manny Bates with four minutes to play, and Kevin Keats calls the sophomore over to the sideline. We were blocked from our angle, really couldn't see. Looked like Bates was trying to man up there in the post. Referees, though, in good position, called another foul, and you're absolutely right. Oguama has done a nice job in the post on both ends. He continues to get to the free throw line. And for the first time since the first half, it's a single-digit lead for NC State with four minutes to play. Well, Bunderberg has been on the bench, but I'm still saying if you're NC State, don't settle for jumpers. Allen finds Funderburg, lost the handle, though. Here comes Wake Forest on a 6-0 run. Williamson a three. It's good! Timeout, Kevin Keats, just like that. It's a two-possession game in Raleigh. Wake Forest starting to heat up. Jacoby Neath and then Davian Williamson. Back-to-back -back threes. I'm calling up my homies. Go, go. We are about to go in. Uh, associate of macaroni. And with this ice, get this in, buddy. Anyway, pull up around nine. A terrific women's basketball doubleheader right here on the ACC Network tomorrow. It tips off with Georgia Tech in Miami and then number one Louisville taking on North Carolina. Great women's basketball doubleheader tomorrow right here on ACCN. Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you. A rivalry game in Raleigh and Steve Forbes Wake Forest team on a 9-0 run. Just like that, a two-possession game with 3.30 to play. They've done a nice job hanging around in this one and for as poorly as they've shot it and then with the turnovers, they're right within two possessions in this game. Ellums hauls that pass in, steps into it and knocks it down. Much needed bucket from the junior Jericho Hellums. And that's twice now. He had the and one and then right there, nice little pump fake using his mid-range game and that's a big bucket. For NC State. Oguama has been feasting in the second half, but couldn't post up on DJ Funderburg there. Great defense from the senior. Yeah, and also, if you're Wake, you got to take a better angle to try to enter that ball into the post. You're trying to float it, Funderburg used the long arms. That's a great post defensive play by Funderburg. Or tries to slide it into Thunderbird, and he's fouled. 
A great response from NC State out of the timeout in the 9-0 run. Thunderbird heads to the foul line when we come back leading by eight. Tomorrow, we reveal the ACC football schedule live on Packer and Durham, and you can catch him every weekday morning on the ACC Network starting at 7 o'clock. Football release schedule already, man. We're in the middle of basketball season, but ACC football does not stop. Really excited to, to see next year's conference slate. Well, NC State with an eight-point lead. They had a 14-point lead at the nine-minute mark when their leading scorer, Devin Daniels, was taken to the locker room with an apparent lower body injury. We've confirmed he will be gone for the rest of the night. And Wake Forest took advantage without Daniels in this game, closed the gap to six. And now Thunderbird at the line to make it a 10-point game again. A little more breathing room for the Wolfpack. And his first free throw of the night. Make that two, and uh, you're absolutely right, Jay, how they would respond after Devin Daniels went down with the injury and started off a little shaky, but then they have responded to put this game back up into double digits. Williamson fires a three and hits it. Davian Williamson makes it a seven-point game with two minutes to play. Cam Hayes might have stepped on the line. No, a foul called. And it looks like they got Hayes for a charge. It is charge. against Hayes. Yeah, that's Wake Forest basketball with an arm mode. Yep. Offensive foul. A shove off. And just like that, two minutes to play. Wake Forest basketball only down seven. Another block. That's the eighth of the night for NC State. And now if you're NC State, certainly want to run some clock. about that from the freshman Shaquille Moore the hesitation at a big time bucket down the stretch I don't think the shot clock started as you see it there with 29 so they're gonna have to adjust this give Steve Forbes an opportunity to talk things over with his team trailing by nine take another look it's a big time play from the freshman and I've been impressed with his court presence. He's made some nice plays. And then that one right there, nice footwork, little reverse pivot, and the floater and the lane. And uh, you can see why uh, NC State is excited about this young, talented backcourt. All the physical tools. And then obviously with more time, practice time, and reps, future very bright uh, for all of those guys. And, at another official review. Not sure what they're checking on. And we just got word is shot clock. So looks like the shot clock did not start and they're trying to figure that out. See how many ticks should be back on. So crafty Shaquille Moore on that reverse pivot. Put the ball right out there for Masood to see it and then brought it back the other way for two. You know, NC State fans just want to see more consistency from the freshman. He's shown flashes at a really hot start to the season. Only played four minutes last time out against North Carolina, but he's put together a really solid night tonight. Eight points, a couple of steals, two blocks. And we talked to Kevin Keita about this and look, the big reason for the inconsistency to go along with him being a freshman uh, they haven't had much practice time they've had uh, some interruptions as of late they went uh, multiple days without any practice time and uh, anytime you're a freshman I don't care what league you're in but in particular the ACC you're going to have some bumps along the way and 
you know, that really has slowed some of his progress, uh, the stoppage that they had. And certainly you're right, Jay. He has shown flashes early on, though, in the season. Here's Jacoby Neath, Williamson off the screen, looking for a three, and he's got it. Davian Williamson buries his third three of the night. It's a six-point game with a minute to play. Foul comes in. Cam Hayes will head to the foul line. Well, Wake's doing a nice job with some ball screens. That time, Helm's a little late. And if you're NC State, if you're going to switch, you have to communicate and be there on the catch. Williamson, though, coming off a nice little curl cut, and that's a tough three. But again, nice action by Wake Porras on that set play. So, Wake Forest is heating up from three. Might be too little, too late, but maybe not. They've made four of their last five, and three of those belong to Davian Williamson. Three possession game after that made free throw. Trying to get it into Williamson. Then Neath, it's still Wake Forest basketball. Demon Deacons have two timeouts. If they struggle to get it in play, you can call one of those. Wake Forest had an early 8-2 lead. The press forced them to melt a little bit, but breaking the press there, Jacoby Neath right to the rack, and it's a five-point game with 54.5 to play. That's a tough shot by Neath. Funderburg did not want to pick up the foul, but had his hand straight up, and Neath did a nice job breaking pressure. And that's a tough shot, eyes on the rim. Great concentration and body control by Neath. And I'll tell you what, and like you said, Jay, it may be a little too late. Plenty of time left, obviously, but you know, credit Wake Forest hanging around in this game. You know, obviously, though, the big turning point was Devin Daniels going down with the injury. And that certainly well, Malcolm, has changed. This is the microcosm of kind of Wake's ACC season, right? You look at their record one and six, but in those seven games, they have battled to the very end. And sure, for many stretches in this game, they turn the ball over, they miss shots, but with under a minute to play, they're right in it, down five. Helms will head to the line for two. Demon Wake Deacons dug themselves an 18-point hole, and they've done a nice job digging out of it. And Wake definitely was not trying to foul there. They were trying to set up their double team, see if they can get a steal. Helms did a nice job trying to run away from the double. Kevin Keats takes a timeout. He had three, so he uses one of them. His Wolfpack team trying to end a four-game losing streak, the longest in the Kevin Keats era. And they're trying to do with without Devin Daniels, their leading scorer, who went to the locker room at the nine-minute mark. And at that point, NC State had a 14-point lead. Kevin Keats is setting up his defense and I'm sure he is talking to them about the communication has to be on point. So any ball screens, pin downs, you have to communicate, come together, make sure there's no slips of screens, uh, but certainly you don't want to give up any uncontested shots from the perimeter. Here's Williamson, he's had the hot hand. 
In trouble in the corner, though. Dribbles out of it. Splits defenders right to the rack and lays it up and in for two. Shaquille Moore dribbles out of the trap. Up ahead, easy lay-in for Thomas Allen. Well, that's a heads-up play so often in the game. Teams don't know when to go or not, and that time they knew they had a layup. Take advantage of it. Deep three goes begging from Davian Williamson, kept alive. Masood fires a three. He can't hit it. And an immediate foul kill comes in with 18 seconds left, and Shaquille Moore heads to the foul line to add to this seven-point lead. And this right here, great spin out that time by Allen. And then it led to a open layup. And, you know, Jay, that's a good read by Allen right there. Again, sometimes you want to pull it out, but if you have an advantage, that time they had a three-on-one. Go ahead and take the easy deuce. Uh, that's excellent press break, but that's all set up. By Allen spinning out of that double team last time. Moore makes it an eight-point lead for Kevin Keats' team. Our Zaxby's player of the game tonight, Devin Daniels, even though he's missed the last nine minutes in the locker room with an apparent lower body injury, a double-double, 20 points, 10 rebounds. He really set the tone tonight, Malcolm. He really did. He started off defensively sound, but it was his offense in that first half, and I can't say enough about what he did in this game, a double-double. It was just impressive. Let's just hope that he's not out for an extended time. Once again, two possession game. Cam Hayes can, of course, change that at the foul line. But Wake Forest under Steve Forbes, one thing that has remained consistent in ACC play, the scoreboard may not always agree with them, but you cannot question the heart and the hustle that they bring night in and night out. Yeah, it's impressive. And then on the other side for NC State, if you're Kevin Keats, you obviously uh, have concern about Daniels, uh, him and how long he is going to be out. But his guys responded. That was obviously the question, how they would respond with him out. And, you know, they've been able to hold on thus far. And those are two big free throws to extend this now to a three-possession game. Wake has one timeout, half court heave, and Okwama takes that final timeout with seven seconds. Just trying to advance the ball there. And we mentioned Devin Daniels as our Zaxby's player of the game. For those that missed it earlier, he was injured at the nine minute mark. We have not seen him since he went to the locker room, but he was terrific. Take a couple of looks at this. Yeah, step back three right there. Uh, he had it all going to the basket. He showed off the three-point range, and then he was able to break down this Wake Forest defense that time. Beautiful floater. Uh, he did a little bit of everything in this game to go along with excellent defense. Again, he was the player of the game. He set the tone, and you know, certainly right now, Kevin Keats, seven seconds left. They want to uh, do what they need to do to close this one out. And then I think all thoughts go on Devin Daniels. Again, uh, you know, we don't know other than he was not coming back into this game. And I'm uh, sure he'll get evaluated and see if he's out for any extended time. But it was an impressive response by the NC State team once he went down to hold on to this lead against Wake Forest. And again, the story of this game early, NC State forced 11 steals, 21 turnovers. It's been better as of late, but Wake Forest trailed by 18. And this game got away from them. They've played a lot better down the stretch, but credit the Wolfpack for that early lead. Williamson out of the set play timeout, buries the three. He's really heated up his fourth three of the night. And Steve Forbes, does do not foul and NC State holds on 72 67 to snap the four game losing streak. Kevin Keats and company back in the win column.
and that's what it was. A win for NC State at home. They took care of business. Devin Daniels was impressive, but their defense, 24 points off of turnovers. Uh, that really was the secondary story in this game. Uh, NC State's defense uh, did a nice job creating offense off of turnovers. Now you said it, Malcolm, creating offense out of defense and the Wolfpack in their first home game in PNC Arena in 18 days snaps a four game losing streak to improve to three and four in ACC play. Our final score one more time from Raleigh. NC State 72, Wake Forest 67. Wednesday night hoops on the ACC Network. For our terrific crew, Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jay Alter saying so long from Raleigh.